Hello there people of the internet and hello there YouTube reviewer. All firearms shown today are semi-automatic and I'm only using a 20 round magazine even though I've only got 5 rounds inside of it because I'm poor. Everything shown today is in full compliance with YouTube's community guidelines. Okay, now that's out of the way. Hello there people of the internet. How's everybody doing today? I'm doing alright, thanks for asking. It's a hot one out here in Florida and I'm a little on the winded side but I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, try to go ahead and make myself this video. So uh, I don't really know how to start with this, but I noticed a striking uh, similarity whenever I was checking out some of my AR platforms. Whenever it comes to their weight, I was picking up one and checking out, and I, I was just like in the mood where I was checking out stuff, right? And I'd noticed a significant similarity in weight between two of my AR platforms, and I was like. How is this possible? So let me go ahead and actually take this out and toss it to the side. Let me go ahead and show off this right here. This is my Radical RF-15. And uh, this one right here is chambered in 223-556. Both rifles I'm showing out here are in 223-556. But this Radical RF-15 has the 15-inch M-Lock. Uh, it's got aluminum upper and lower. And the only thing that is on this is some very cheap, poor quality. I think that these are Magpul flip sights. There's not a whole lot going on with this rifle right here. We got some B5 furniture on this thing and the full length M-Lock handguard on this thing. Uh, these little tiny features like this do add some weight to the system. Well, whenever I was picking this up and I was just checking it out, I had picked up another one of my rifles. This is a Delton DTI-15, and this has a bunch of accessories and whatnot on top of it. And I had noticed that this AR, with all of its accessories, was literally, like, identical in weight to this AR that has absolutely nothing on it. And I was like, that is absolutely insane. In fact, this one might feel slightly lighter, but boy, are they incredibly similar. So uh, both of these are going to be rocking a 16-inch barrel. Both have the same exact barrel profile. Uh, both of them have aluminum upper and lower receivers. But there's a couple of differences between the Delton DTI-15 and the RF-15 that we have here. First big one is going to be the 15-inch aluminum handguard on the RF-15 as opposed to our uh, much shorter handguard on the on the Delton DTI-15 here. Now me, as a shooter, um, just with my style of shooting, having a shorter length handguard on the rifle doesn't really make or break anything with me. I know some people, they'll want to get that C grip over, the, over their, uh, their handguard and they just can't manage to do that with a shorter handguard like this right here. They would need a full length. So if you want to be able to get yourself a C grip on your rifle or something like that, something that looks kind of like this, then you would want your longer length handguard. But for the most part, most people don't do that, uh, just from what I've seen, especially if you aren't some kind of uh, high-tech, high-yield, high-speed, you know, special forces guy. If you're just an average shooter like I am, standard grip on a rifle is absolutely more than adequate, especially since my types of shooting are at 40 yards into a pile of garbage. <laughs> I'm not exactly a speed shooter or a competition shooter or anything like that. So with my styles of shooting, the shorter length handguard not only saves a tremendous amount of weight, but doesn't really hinder my uh, capabilities uh, as a shooter because my capabilities are extremely subpar. So on top of the shorter length handguard, I also have standard M4 style furniture on this. I think that the buttstock for this M4 is like 6.5 ounces versus the buttstock that is the B5. This right here would be 9 ounces. We also have a B5 Systems uh, pistol grip on this thing versus the standard M4 style of pistol grip that we have on the Delton. And this just equates to saving a couple ounces in weight. Now, saving ounces in weight from the handguard, from the pistol grip, and from the buttstock, uh, it really does equate to having a tremendously lighter weight rifle. 
And so as a result, if I am fine with a rifle of this weight, then I can go ahead and afford to be able to stack some weight onto a rifle like this, such as adding a sling and an optic and uh, a flashlight and uh, mounting points and just small things like that to go ahead and dramatically improve the capabilities of this rifle without increasing the weight beyond my level of comfort if my level of comfort is already okay for a rifle of that weight. Now, of course, if I took off the optic, if I took off the sling, if I took off the light and I only rocked like these aluminum iron sights that I currently have on this thing, this rifle would be an even lighter weight rifle and it would still be, for the most part, uh, capable for the things that I use this rifle for. This is actually my coyote hunting gun. Actually, I would want the white light on it because uh, a lot of coyotes come out at night and boy, has this right here made a huge difference. And I would want the optic on it and I would want the sling on it because I sometimes have to walk across fields and having a sling really does help. Just, yeah, it is nice to have accessories on the rifle, but the only thing that you really need on a rifle in order to put lead down range is some sort of sighting system for that rifle. So something like this right here, I've made a video talking about this if you want more, want more uh, argumentative information on it, but something like this right here, although there's no attachments at all on this rifle, you can still uh, very effectively put lead down range with something like this because you have your sighting system on it. And as a result, you can literally just, I mean, if you're fine with carrying it or if you're fine with you know, not having a light on the rifle and maybe having one in your hand or a headlamp or whatever other system it is that you decide to use. If you're all right with uh, the restrictions of having no accessories on the rifle, then uh, you absolutely could use that rifle pretty darn effectively if you chose to. Now, I myself wouldn't necessarily choose to use something like that. Just having a bunch of accessories is super convenient. And I can afford to have these accessories on a rifle like this simply because of how dramatically lightweight this rifle is. Now, if I were to take the accessories off of this rifle and toss them onto this rifle, this rifle would likely start to become a little too heavy for my tastes. Of course, you know, I'm a military surplus guy. I'm used to, you know, lugging around the Mosin and the Gaunt and the M1 Grand and, and the, the long, long Mausers and I'm, I'm just used to heavy guns. So it wouldn't really be that much of a deal breaker, but uh, I have taken these guns out and I've used them for practical purposes and I've used them for, uh, well, situations that require me to hold them and walk with them for long periods of time. And so as a result, I know the effectiveness of having a lightweight rifle. So if I can have myself a lightweight rifle, especially something that has a way for me to be able to carry it way more comfortably than I normally would be able to carry it, this sling is upside down, but if I had something to be able to carry it way more comfortably versus this right here, which is of equal weight and does not have a sling or sling uh, mounting option on it, well, I guess it does back here, but um, since this right here does not have a, uh, a sling on it, Carrying this around of equal weight would be more difficult than carrying this around of equal weight that has an actual sling on it, just because of the carrying system and how it is uh, not as easy. Because this one, I would have to the RT or the the the, the radical firearms, the RF15. This right here, I would have to carry in my hand, which would be significantly more exhausting than carrying this one on a sling. And I wanted to go ahead and make this video and just kind of bring up this idea. If you start with a bare bones rifle like I did, both of these were bare bones. They had nothing on them, no accessories, no attachments, no anything like that. If you start with a bare bones rifle that is already lightweight, then you will be able to attach a bunch of stuff to the firearm without uh, increasing the uh, required dexterity that would be necessary to lug around a heavier rifle that you would not be throwing anything on. Now, if you did want to throw things on this, then like I said, of course, you would be adding weight to this right here. And if you are fine with having a heavier rifle, then by all means, you go ahead and you do whatever it is you want. I know I have some people in the comments who will go in the comments and they'll say, I rock a, I don't know, an M14 or an M1 Grand or something like that. And I don't care about the weight because I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a weakling. And, uh, well, yeah, okay. 
I'm also not a weakling, but I don't like the idea of carrying around, you know, a 12 pound rifle with another 10 pounds worth of gear with it whenever I am trudging through the woods and jungles of Florida, which you can see down there. That's, thank you, Kevin. That's very much what the <laughs> woods of Florida look like. All right, I'm going to go ahead and send a couple of rounds downrange through this RTI. I got myself a 20 round magazine with five rounds inside of it. I'm putting this through a break in period. But uh, I want to go ahead and show off. Hmm, that's melt burnt. I want to go ahead and show off um, how. <laughs> how you could absolutely be deadly and effective with this rifle with absolutely no attachments on it. Literally all you need is some sort of sighting system to be able to effectively put lead down range. Now there are some caveats and some situations where you would want certain accessories. And uh, well, I already talked about that with that Delton rifle, but I already also made a video talking about how this right here is a bare minimum thing and how yes although accessories do definitely come in handy they're not necessarily necessary okay i don't think i have anything else to ramble on with this video so i'm just going to send these rounds man i love this thing this is actually a really nice shooting rifle now that it's been broken in anyway folks thanks for watching i appreciate your time let me know what you guys think down below um, I'm sure that I'm going to have some people just like call me weak because I can't carry a heavy rifle. I think I'm going to have people tell me that I'm absolutely correct. So thanks for watching. Links in the description. Like, subscribe, share, etc, etc. Closing outro. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll see you all in the next video. I've done this. Body and Clyde be damned. <laughs>